Welcome to Frank Specs. On this video, we delve into the fascinating journey of human evolution. Join us as we uncover the remarkable story of how our species have adapted, survived, and thrived through the ages. From ancient accessory to modern humans, this is a journey you would not want to miss. Get ready to explore the wonders of human evolution right here on Frank Speaks. Creationism and the study of evolution has been a controversial debate for decades now leaving many people on one side or the other. Creationism argues that faith should take precedence over science, basing its belief on one book for guidance, the Bible. God created the earth and everything on it, taking six days. Evolutionists believe that earth is much older than the Bible describes, and that plants, animals, and humans are a result of a natural progression called evolution. There were no common ancestors, Adam and Eve, from whom we came. It was a natural selection process, stemming from inorganic compound and nature. For many people in the scientific world, it is hard to take a final stance on this issue since there is evidence of evolution. But that is where faith in God and what God has done comes into effect. According to a great medieval philosopher, Moses, conflict between science and the Bible arises from either a lack of scientific knowledge or a defective understanding of the Bible. The first humans emerged in Africa around 2 million years ago, long before the modern humans known as Homo sapiens appeared on the same continent. There is a lot of anthropologists still do not know about how different groups of human interacted and mated with each other over this long stretch of prehistory. Thanks to new archaeological and geological research, they are still trying to fill in some of the blanks. The first humans. First and first, a human is anyone who belongs to the genus Homo, Latin for man. Scientists still do not know exactly when or how the first human evolved, but they have identified a few of the oldest ones. One of the earliest known humans is Homo habilis or handyman who lived about 2.4 million to 1.4 million years ago in Eastern and Southern Africa. Others include Homo rudiofensis, who lived in Eastern Africa about 1.9 million to 1.8 million years ago. Its name comes from its discovery in East Rudolf, Kenya. A Homo erectus, the upright man, who ranged from Eastern Africa all the way to modern-day China and Indonesia from about 1.89 million to 110,000 years ago. In addition to these early humans, researchers have found evidence of an unknown super archaic group that separated from other humans in Africa around 2 million years ago. These super archaic humans mated with the ancestors of Neanderthals and Denisovans. According to a paper published in Science Advance in February of 2022, this marked the earliest known instance of human groups mating with each other, something we know happened a lot more later early humans, Neanderthals, Denisovans mixed it up. After the super archaic humans came the archaic ones, Neanderthals, Denisovan and other human groups that no longer exist. Archaeologists have known about Neanderthal or Homo Neanderthals since the 19th century, but not only discovered Denisovans in 2008, the group is so new it does not have a scientific name yet. Since then, researchers have discovered Neanderthals and Denisovans not only only mated with each other, they also mated with modern humans. When the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology began getting nuclear DNA sequenced data for Neanderthals, then it became very clear very quickly that modern humans carried some Neanderthal DNA, says Alan Ariroga, a professor of anthropology and biology at the University of Utah and lead author of the Science Advance paper. There was a real turning point. It became widely accepted very quickly after that. A small recently discovered group, we have far less information on Denis servants, but archaeologists have found evidence that they lived and mated with other groups in Siberia for around 1,000 years. The most direct evidence of this is a recent discovery of a 13-year-old girl who lived in a cave about 9,000 years ago. DNA analysis revealed that the mother was a Neanderthal and her father was a Denisovan. The human evolution. Scientists are still figuring out when all these intergroup mating took place. Modern humans have mated with Neanderthals after migrating out of Africa and into Europe and Asia around 70,000 years ago. Apparently, this was no one-night stand. Research suggests there were multiple encounters between Neanderthals and modern humans. Less is known about the Denisovans and their movement. 
but research suggests that more than humans mated with them in Asia and Australia between 50,000 to 15,000 years ago. Until recently, some researchers assumed people of African descent did not have Neanderthal's ancestry because their predecessors didn't leave Africa to meet the Neanderthals in Europe and Asia. But in January of 2020, a paper in Cell appended that narrative by reporting that modern population across Africa also carry a significant amount of Neanderthal DNAs. Researchers suggest this could be the result of modern human migrating back into Africa over the last 20 years after mating with Neanderthals in Europe and Asia. Given this type of discoveries, it may be better to think about human evolution as a breeder string rather than a classical tree of evolution, says Andrew C., a postdoctoral researcher in archaeology at the London University in Netherlands. Although the majority of modern human DNA still comes from a group that developed in Africa, Neanderthals, and the Denisovan DNA account for only a small percentage of our genes. Now, new discoveries about intergroup mating have complicated our view of human evolution. It seems like the more DNA evidence that we get, every question that gets answered, five more pops up, he says. So, it is a bit of an evolutionary wakamoli. Every human ancestor shared skills. Human groups that encountered each other probably swapped more than just genes. Two, Neanderthals living in modern-day France roughly 50,000 years ago knew how to start a fire, according to a 2008 Nature paper on which Andrew was the lead author. Fire starting is a skill that different human groups could have possessed along to each other, possibly even one that Neanderthals had taught so many modern humans. These early human groups, they really got around, Andrew says. These people just moved around so much that it's very difficult to tease out these relationships. The beginning of the earth, along with the birth of humans, is one of the biggest and most contentious issues among creationists and evolutionists. Scientific theory holds the opinion that the universe is eternal, while the Bible states that there is a beginning. It has been proven that there was an official beginning. The question that arises is when the exact beginning took place. A time where there was neither time, nor space, nor matter. Christianity uses the Old Testament to describe the beginning of life. In the span of six days, God created the heavens, the earth, the sun, moon, water, animals, and ended with the finale of human beings. Other major events such as Noah's flooding occurred along the lifespan of the earth, accounting for the distribution of fossil and the information of the earth's layer. St. Augustine of Hippo, who was raised a Christian and later became a member of mannequins, believed that the Old Testament was nonsense. He believed, therefore, that organic forms were potentially in a kind of seed form and realized actually when the conditions were right, when the seas appeared for instance. Augustine believed that God created everything in one move. Conception, wish, creation were all at the same time. Evolution is defined as the development by natural cause of all organism. Those today and those yesterday from other forms probably ultimately much simpler and originally perhaps from one living substance. According to evolutionists, the earth began approximately 4.5 billion years ago. The explosion of life beginning around 55 million years ago. To evolutionists, the starting of life began as inorganic molecules that underwent a natural transformation through electricity or heat. To become organic molecules, these building blocks joined to form micromolecular chains that eventually made up organisms. The chains started to replicate, feed off the pre-embryonic soup which is the state of pounds and so forth as a result of the first stage of evolution. The experiment done by Stanley Miller and Harriet Urell in Chicago in the 1950s confirmed by the organic molecular to heat an electronic shock. They were able to obtain organic amino acid compounds naturally and rapidly. Evolution finds the organs of organism developing a long 4.5 billion year span and says that humans are a new creation. It does not deny, though, that humans are the final creation, which contradicts the creationism theory where God created human beings in the last day, then resting after creation was complete. 
fossil identification and geography gave evolutionists some insight as to when Earth and life began. Other ways used beside fossil identification to guide evolution include comparing anatomical features, embryological analogies, and similarities dissimilarities. Charles Darwin was a strong believer in evolution and was the founder of the theory of natural selection. Natural selection is a theory that there is a competition for survival, mates, space, food, shelter, etc in which the favorable organism tends to be preserved by nature and the unfavorable ones tend to die out, leading to evolution. There are two major types of evolution, macroevolution and microevolution. Macroevolution deals with change above the surface level, while micro is changes in gene frequency within a population, which may lead to the formation of new species. Darwin believed the natural selection occurred in nature the need to select and breed only the best and most desirable stock. The concepts of genetic and hereditary did not come along until later when introduced by Gregory Medel. And later the study of evolution emerged with the discovery of DNA by Weston and Crick in 1953. The age of the earth has been debatable. First, with creationists stating that the earth started with God first creating the heavens and the earth. Some scientists argue that the earth already had the properties to sustain life, as the Bible agrees. And God said, let the land produce vegetable, Genesis chapter 1 verse 11. And later on, let the land produce living creatures, according to the Kings chapter 1 verse 24. Nowhere in the Bible does it say or suggest that each species had its own creation. A view that is strongly upheld by creationists that all the living things have remained fixed over time. God created each creature the exact way that we see the organisms today. When God created the earth and everything on it, God said it was good. Creationists argue that if something arose that was not perfect in God's eyes, God had the power to destroy it. Hence the reason for the flood. God kept the good and destroyed the bad. It is scientifically difficult to take the Bible seriously because many interpretations over the decades and most people believe that one cannot take everything within the Bible literally. For example, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 5, 8 and 13, it describes how God created evening and day. And every verse following a day of creation ends with, and there was evening, and there was morning. But it is not until later in Genesis that a sun and moon were created to govern the day and evening. God made two great lights, the greater lights to govern the day, and the lesser lights to govern the night. Genesis chapter 1 verse 16. This example, along with countless other points to scientific belief that the Bible is an unreliable source, one that specific scientific information should not be taken from. The Bible does not suggest one evolutionary change in a physical threat, the threat of longevity. Throughout the Bible, the lifespans at the beginning were around 900 years, and sexual maturity ranged from 65 to 187. For it was a miracle for Sarah and Abraham to have a son. She was only 89 years old. The trend of shortening lifespan and more rapid sexual maturity is similar to that observed in domesticated animals. These form a base for today's breeding and population genetics. Evolutionists state the creationists have only one source from which they are arguing from and their argument are a way of covering up what they do not know or understand about the scientific world. This failure has come in two main ways. One, the failure to deal with the large amount of evidence that supports evolution and the fact that animals and plants are different today than in the past. And two, the failure to provide any alternative theory to natural history. The real theory of creationism is based and centered on faith, faith in God and what God has provided. Science exists because of evidence, whereas religion exists upon faith and in the case of fundamentalism and creationism in spite of evidence. The evolutionist takes a different stand on this topic of life. No mention of a special creation is associated with the start of life. 
the earth itself had the special properties to orchestrate the beginning of life. Today, this would be referred to as the self-organization with the aids of catalysts. The experiment done by Miller and Ural supports the statement that earth was awaiting for its beginning on its own time. Organic molecules, proteins, plant life, and animal life evolved along the way. Fossil evidence was discovered that showed life started immediately on a cooled earth. Fossil shows a variety of species and show species involving into other species, intermediate or transitional species. The fact of the matter is that the fossil record not only documents evolution, but that it was the fossil record itself which forced the natural science to abandon the idea of the fixity of species and look instead for a possible mechanism of change, a mechanism of evolution. For example, the human develops the similar to a reptile with a few modifications that make the human species unique. Yolk sac to fish eggs to having a tail to a three-chambered heart like a reptile to a four-chambered heart to a reptilian double jaw joint to a skin fold to covering of hair to having human characteristics. One argument against fossil evidence is the idea that fossil dating could be inaccurate. Fossil dating is done using carbon-14, which for it to be of value, the amount of C-14 must have always been a constant. If the intensity of radiation, specifically cosmic radiation, differ in any way, then the C-14 dating system could be flawed. Scientists discover fossils throughout the various layers of the Earth, according to the time period the organisms corresponded with. The bottom layer contained species associated with the beginning of the Earth, while the top layers contained more recent and advanced species, especially mammals. Evolutionists feel that these findings strongly argue for evolution. They feel that if God had created the Earth and everything on it, all fossil remains would be mixed together. Creationists argue that the reason for the fossil being distributed the way they are is because of the Great Flood. Most of the time, creationists avoid this topic because of the lack of evidence they have against it. The controversy continues whether gradual evolution took place and if it did occur, why was it not evident in fossil records?